Welcome to the ASU Organ Hall. We've missed you. Today's presentation is not an ordinary organ recital, but rather a sound meditation using the timbres of the Fritz organ to help create harmony between your body, mind, and spirit. In these unsettling times, I thought we should return to age-old wisdom about the therapeutic qualities of sound and vibration. And what better place to use sound for healing than in this wonderful musical environment. It's a bit of an experiment to see if the power of our vibrations will transcend the internet. And of course, once we're able to be together in the sound environment, we'll have to continue our exploration. But for today, I thought this was a good response to what our community needs right now. And so I've prepared a bit of a background into sound therapies, as well as a meditation that I will lead you in. For this, you will need to be very comfortable. Traditionally, when it's lying down, with pillows under the knees to release the back, and also under the neck to support the cervical spine. Perhaps be thinking about this as we continue, so that you're able to get into a very, very relaxed position. If sitting upright is better for your back, do that. The important thing is that you're able to be so completely relaxed that your body can fully absorb the vibrations coming from the Fritz organ. Some of you may be rather surprised to have a sound back using the organ. And the traditional instruments for this are the gong, which has perhaps the most wide spectrum of harmonics of any instrument, and singing bowls, noted for their incredible resonance. In some healing traditions, the singing bowl is even placed on the body to create resonance. But the organ has both of these qualities in abundance. Incredible spectrum of overtones to help create vibrations in many different areas of the body at many different frequencies, as well as the resonance required to really enter into your bones. So let's explore a bit how the organ might be used for sound meditation, starting with the long history of how the organ, the Greek organ, the hydraulics, was used for sound therapy millennia ago. The ancient Greeks were well aware of music's therapeutic qualities, and sound healing was used by the Greeks in order to moderate the temperaments. Damon, the teacher of Socrates and Pericles, wrote that music is powerful because it imitates the movements of the soul. Music was believed to suppress human passions and desires, and it was used as a moral and educational tool to control excess and disturbed minds. Music was believed to calm the animal part of the soul, and sound therapy could be used to that end. The Greek god Apollo is known for his abilities as a musician. Here he is shown 
with the traditional lyre, offering a libation. Plato writes, harmony, which has motions akin to the revolutions of the soul within us, was given by the muses as an auxiliary to the inner revolution of the soul when it has lost its harmony to assist in restoring it to order and concord with itself. Music has therapeutic qualities for the mind and the soul. The Greeks invented the instrument known as the organ, where water in cisterns stabilized wind pressure. This wind was allowed into pipes via a keyboard mechanism. Here you see a stone sarcophagus where a, a hydraulis is depicted. And on the right side of the screen, you see a diagram from an early account of the hydraulis showing the water cisterns at the bottom, the pipes on the top, and then at the left side, the intricate key mechanism to link the two. Was the hydraulis a sedative or a stimulant? We have accounts of both. The Byzantine Emperor Justin II was plagued with mental illness, and accounts refer to the use of an organ, which his advisors kept almost continuously playing day and night near his chamber. As long as he heard the sounds of the tunes it played, he remained quiet. In this way, organ music was able to calm a troubled, troubled mind. And they also made him amazed at the sound of the organ in that wherever he was, almost all day and all night, he spoke to the assembly about it. And sometimes when he heard the sound of the organ's tunes, he was quiet. Although it also happened that he would suddenly get up and shout out and utter words without them being in any way sensibly ordered. So it was difficult to predict the effect of the hydraulis on John of Ephesus. But overall, it seemed to help control his madness. Another account of the therapeutic properties of the hydraulis comes from the Christian monk, Isaac of Antioch. Upon his arrival in Antioch, Isaac heard the hydraulis being played in the streets. And it was so loud that the citizens were deprived of sleep. Isaac writes that the entire night I was hearing the sound of kitaras, hydraulis, and symphonias resounding in front of the ruler's palaces. In this instance, it was a very stimulating sound, much the way music is often used in our culture. But later, the strong sound of the hydraulis wakes Isaac and his fellow monks, and instead of bothering them, it seems to inspire them to awaken their creativity so that they sing a psalm. Isaac recounts, on a certain day, during the sweetness of deep sleep, the hydraulis howled with its voice, and alarmed at sound, I was startled awake. I and the brothers who were with me arose to hasten to worship, and a psalm came to us as appropriate for the occasion. The hydraulis has many functions, in this short account of stimulating, awakening, and inspiring for religious worship. Now, there's been a lot of research recently about sound and its use in healing. Uh, it's in many traditional cultures, and perhaps because the world is searching for balance, searching for peace. Many of these techniques are making appearances in different forms, and we're seeing a lot of research coming to try to explain whether 
these are fraudulent claims or whether there are some benefits with vibration and sound therapy. There are a bewildering number of sound therapies advertised on the internet and it can be very, very difficult to know whether any of them have benefits and what type of sound therapy is appropriate. I've been exploring this for the last couple of years in many different arenas and it occurred to me that with the marvelous resources of sound that we have in the ASU organ hall, that it might be possible to use the Fritz organ in an attempt to create sound therapy. So we'll be experimenting with that today in a sound meditation. But first, I want to show how a lot of the music that has been composed for the instrument exploits the qualities that we will be looking at in the sound meditation. Let's listen to the Agnus Dei from Margaret Sandresky's L'Homme Armé Organ Mass, where you will hear the sounds of flutes, one in the treble soaring above, and notice the way she uses silence to punctuate that soaring line. Part of the peaceful feeling imparted by Margaret Sandresky's Agnus Dei, Lamb of God, from her organ mass, is the quality of resonance. The way the flutes sing out into the acoustic 
and the way our bodies internalize them. Sound frequencies are translated as a sort of restructuring order of the gears of the universe. In many healing therapies, there are many techniques that help us to heal with sound vibrations, and some of these benefits have been scientifically proven. Sound and music therapy are based on resonance, the idea of one vibration bringing into coordination another vibration so that a weak or unhealthy vibration can be modified by using a more intense and harmonious vibration to resonate with it. And one can also learn with practice which sounds work best to resonate in our bodies. All of our bodies are somewhat different, and so this is something that can be acquired through experience and getting to know your body and what resonates literally better with it. Another important quality that we heard in the Sandrasky Agnus Day was the use of silence. Pythagoras wrote that the music of the spheres, or of the cosmos, was a harmony perceived by our ears from the moment we are born. His opinion was that we are so accustomed to it in life that we confuse it with silence. Can we even know silence in the sense that even when we're in an anarchaic chamber, we hear the electricity in our bodies. We hear the pulse of the heart. So in a sense, true silence is never attainable by a human being. And yet, everything is relative. So when we have no discernible sound, there's a sort of relaxation that occurs. Pythagoras established that the sound of the cosmos is also capable of stimulating, curing, and refiguring the mind. It is said that he composed some pieces with the, the intent of curing specific physical and spiritual illnesses, and that he even used these musical pieces to induce mental states leaked to sleeping or relaxation. Another very important aspect of sound therapy is repetition. Repeated sounds or rhythms calm the mind. Our brain is constantly assessing oral stimulants. It is hardwired to notice changes in sound or rhythm and it anticipates how one sound will lead into another. A repeated pattern allows the brain to relax since it knows what is coming next. This phenomenon of repetition is the basis for mantras, for repeated chants, and for musical ostinati, repeated melodies or rhythms. And it's present in a great deal of music. We'll now hear a Shikona by the German composer Johann Pachelbel. This is a piece built over a repeated pattern in the bass line, played here on the pedals, and it illustrates the seductive effect, the calming effect, and sometimes the stimulating effect of hearing a repeated pattern, a musical ostinato.
The repetition that we heard in the Pachelbel Shakona is a very important principle of sound therapy. The mind likes patterns. It likes repetition because it can relax. It can count on what's coming next. It doesn't need to be so alert. And it's lulled into a state of relaxation. When experiencing sound patterns, the mind creates dopamine. And this is the reason for a lot of music's therapeutic effect on people, this repetitive quality. But also, contrast is required to build tension and release, allowing the body to release more fully after having experienced the buildup and the excitement and the stimulation of sound tension. And this is something that is exploited very fully in a sound meditation to help the brain let go, to help the body let go. There needs to be a very intense buildup of sound tension. And finally, the quality of silence to help create the perspective moving from sound vibration into nothingness. And this is a very important aspect of all music as well, the way sound is manipulated is determined by where the silences are. These musical techniques that calm brain waves are repeated rhythmic patterns, the ostinato, like we heard in the Pachelbel, repeated melodic passages, pattern of notes played over and over, also heard in the Pachelbel Chacon, and harmony. Now in this case, perhaps not the sense of the traditional harmony, but more how overtones of a single note or of a chord or cluster are overlaid to produce a maximum of vibrations for the body to experience. And then of course silence to allow the body to assimilate the vibrations. Many scientific studies have shown that our bodies are constantly resonating. Each cell is vibrating. We are energy centers and energy vibrates. This is from a study that was posted in January of 2020. And these images are taken using Raman spectroscopy where a laser light reflects from a sample of tissue and it shows the small fluctuations or vibrations of thousands of cells that are detected and made audible by a computer. And listening to these, it's possible to detect cancer cells using an oral diagnostic tool. And here we see a visual component of that oral diagnostic tool where you notice that the healthy cells Harmonious cells have a symmetrical imagery, whereas the cancer cells show a skewed imagery because the vibrations are not symmetrical. And this is used as a diagnostic tool to determine where damaged tissue is so that it can be excised without having to take away a lot of the healthy tissue around it. Another way in which vibrations are in our bodies and when things are unbalanced or sick or damaged, we see the impact of that in the vibrations. And resonance can perhaps, in some cases, be used to help bring certain cells back into a more healthy state. With this short foray into the history of sound therapy and some of the more recent studies confirming aspects 
of its advantages, we'll now move into the sound meditation with which we will end today's exploration of organ sound. As I mentioned earlier, it's very important for the success of this that you're in a comfortable position. Traditionally, this is lying down, perhaps using a pillow under the head and a pillow or a bolster under your knees to help release the lumbar spine. But really, whatever is going to help you be able to relax and let go with your body and not feel uh, uncomfortable after 30 minutes. So use pillows, blankets, anything that you need to help make yourself fully comfortable and supported. It's traditional to cover or close your eyes. This eliminates visual stimuli that stimulate the brain and make the brain waves go faster. So if you're able to close off all external stimuli by closing your eyes, that's ideal. If you have an eye pillow or a towel or anything you'd like to put on top of your eyes, that weight can also be very soothing. Your body temperature will definitely drop during the meditation since you're not going to be active. So perhaps cover yourself ahead of time with a blanket so that you stay cozy and warm and feelings of cold or discomfort don't bring you out of the meditation. Any type of discomfort will stimulate the brain and bring you out of the meditation. And the goal is, of course, to let the brain waves relax into the deepest state of the sleep cycle, which is the delta brainwave state. So being as comfortable up front and having blankets so that your body stays warm during the meditation is very key. There are three sections to the sound meditation. The total of these three sections will be about 40 minutes. I will begin with a verbal introduction that gives you instructions on breathing and some exercises with tension and release to help you settle in. Then will come the organ sounds and silence. Do not worry if there's silence, that doesn't mean it's over. Because the third section, I will again use verbal clues to bring you out of the sound bath, back into your body, and the very end of the meditation will be opening your eyes back into your surroundings, or perhaps at the screen. There's not going to be anything to look at on the screen during the sound meditation because hopefully you're lying or sitting comfortably with your eyes closed. So just let go and trust that the sound vibrations will be entering in to your body, giving you whatever you need, helping you to relax, but also to access very low brainwave states. The trajectory of the sound meditation, I don't want to tell you too much about it because those musicians of you will obviously start analyzing everything and that is perhaps interesting but not going to allow you to benefit from the low brainwave states. It's very important to get out of your left brain, out of your critical thinking, and just let the sound wash over you. But I do want to tell you a bit what to expect so that um, you can perhaps let go a little bit more and not be anxious. Uh, they'll be starting with a pattern. This might be a, a, a slight melodic pattern. It might be some type of uh, rhythmic pattern. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I'll let myself be influenced by trying to create some type of pattern that the brain can just let go with. Then there will be a quick buildup, probably after about uh, seven or eight minutes. There'll be a buildup to a very, very intense crescendo, a very full, full sound, and it will release slower than it built up. 
what happens as the sound becomes more intense is the body sort of resists it. It experiences this tension and then it will let go. It will surrender to the sound. And that's why there's a slower release to let the body just give in and stop trying to resist. But then there will be a bit of another buildup to an even higher peak. Uh, this is the, the second major crescendo and it will be equally, perhaps even a little bit more intense than the first. Uh, some people find this uh, too intense and they're fighting it, but in my life sound meditations with the organ, I've had people experience a profound sense of release uh, even during the most intense moments. I'm not sure how this will translate via the internet, um, but hopefully you'll gain something of that feeling of tension and then letting go, surrendering into the sound. And then this final climax will abate very, very gradually with other types of sound just to help the body let go, calming eventually into total silence. And at that point, hopefully you're enjoying a delicious Delta experience. And I will bring you out of that experience verbally so that you don't need to worry about when is it over, what should I be doing, I will tell you everything and you will hopefully feel a sense of refreshment, a sense of balance, a sense of peace. I'll be very interested to get reactions. This is an experiment. As I said before, because I've only done these live and I don't know if the effect will be similar, but I will bring you out of the meditation and that will be the end of the presentation because you need time to assimilate, you need time to just relax and restore. And then at the very end of the presentation, I will put some resources for those of you who may want to go deeper into some of this, and we have some wonderful teachers locally. Once the, the pandemic is over, I hope that you'll all have the opportunity to attend a live sound bath, whether with traditional instruments, gongs, and singing bowls, or with the glorious pipe organ. Now get comfortable and we'll start the sound meditation. Getting yourself settled in. Take a deep inhale and let it go with a sigh. Rest back and let go. Closing your eyes and quieting your mind. Be still. Let go of all thoughts, worry, and tension. Relax, trust, and let go. Breathe in fully and exhale with a deep sigh. And again, Breathe in fully, exhale with a deep sigh, letting go even more. 
feel a deep sense of contentment and peace in your heart. Feel it. And now bring this intention into your awareness. I am radiant and free. Now bring your whole body into awareness. Recognize that your body has been a trusted vehicle. It has allowed your expression in the world, creating accomplishments and contributions to the best of its ability. Now it is time for your body to rest deeply. Give yourself permission to let go. Take a breath in, exhale, and let go. Now we're going to move our attention into the body to release trapped energy and to move deeper into total relaxation. Bringing your arms and shoulders and hands into your awareness. As you inhale, begin to tighten the shoulders, arms, and fists. Tighten, tighten, hold, hold, and let go. On your next exhalation, relax even more. Let go and observe and feel the flood of energy in your arms. This time, as you inhale, deliberately induce stiffness and tension in the hips, legs, and feet. Tighten, tighten the hips, legs, and feet. Hold, hold, and let go. Let go completely. Relax and observe the flood of energy in the legs. And now bring your whole body into awareness. And this time, as you inhale, tighten and tense the whole body. Arms, hands, shoulders, feet, legs, face, and buttocks. Tighten, tighten, hold, hold, and let go. On your next exhalation, let go even more. Observe and feel the flood of energy extending to all the muscles, nerves, and cells of your entire body. Let your whole body melt into the flood of energy you feel. Release any holding anywhere. Let go of what is going and let come that which is coming.
And now begin to become aware of the rising and falling of the breath. No effort to change or control it. Slowly, slowly beginning to rise to the surface of awareness. Feel the sensation of the body lying on the floor, the quality of the air as it touches the skin. When you feel the impulse, you can gradually move as if waking from a deep, restorative sleep. If the impulse is to stay still, do so. Taking your time. Do not hurry. As you wish, you can bend your knees and rock your body sideways to the right, laying in a fetal position with your head on your right arm. Feel the earth's support the womb of existence. And bring this intention into your awareness. I am radiant and free. When you are ready, slowly, gently bring yourself into an upright, seated position. No need to hurry. Take your time. Notice the relaxed feeling in the body, the quietness of the breath, the calmness of the mind. You have found a place of balance that you can come to again and again. It is always in your reach. And you can share it with others. Restoring harmony to ourselves, our communities, and our environment. Savor this balance and be grateful for it. When you are ready, gently open your eyes.